morning. It is our honor to be with you as we gather today to worship God and to give thanks for Johannes' life and to know that God calls him now to kingdom of life everlasting and the promises that we receive in that. We've met most of you, but again, I'm Pastor Paul, Pastor Joe, and we are honored to be part of this service today. Uh, in just a few moments time, Pastor Joe will go in and welcome uh, those who've gathered in the congregation and share uh, similar announcements to what we're doing now. And then uh, we will make our way in and uh, make our way in during the first hymn. Uh, be that my vision, one of Johannes' favorites. Uh, you will see that the first uh, five or six pews on the left side are all reserved for your family. And we are comfortable with you all deciding uh, however that order of seating would be, of course. Uh, you know, you would be in the front row and, and, and the children is nearby proximity, uh, but to fill those in. If you are um, one who is planning on speaking uh, words of remembrance during the family reflection time, we'd ask that you try to position yourselves to either the outside or the inside of the row uh, to be able to get up easier. And just uh, to get a sense, how many of you are planning on speaking during that time? So, okay, perfect. Uh, and I'll let you all determine the order and, and as one of you finishes and makes your way down the stairs, the next can come up and we can go from there and then we'll conclude at the time. At the end of the service, uh, we'll sing the first verse of Amazing Grace together in our seats and then we will start to make our way. Uh, on the way in, I will lead with the cross and Pastor Joe will be with you today and then on the way out, we'll switch and Pastor Joe will carry out the cross and then uh, the gentleman from the funeral home will lead the casket, all bearers you will follow and then uh, I will be with you and we'll make our way out. We'll pause here in the back where we'll take the funeral pall off and put the spray on the beautiful flowers and then we'll make our way uh, down this way excuse me and out these glass doors and then the pallbearers right in front of the wooden cross will move the casket from the, uh, the rolling cart into the hearse and then at that point we'll go from there we know that there are a lot of people who want to join us at parkland for the graveside and so what we'll be sharing before the end of the service is that if you're on fifth street here go ahead and get in line behind the procession but we're also going to take the procession up around the block and come back down Pilot View so that anybody who's parked down there with us can join us. And then it's a straight drop <coughs> down Peters Creek to the graveside. I believe that covers all the logistics. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Umbrellas. So anticipating rain, obviously. Yeah, you can leave your umbrellas here. Um, it, again, it's going to be probably five to six minutes between when we put the casket in the hearse and when we leave. Um, so you can come back and get your umbrellas if you need to use the restroom, whatever. We need a moment to get out of our robes and just do logistics, have people have a moment to get to their cars. And so uh, we won't leave right away. We don't just jump in the car and go. And so, yeah, there will be that time to come back and fetch your umbrellas and to, to do all that. And anything you want to leave in here, you're welcome to. Yes, sir. There is an um, Orthodox uh, priest coming from, from uh, High Point. He'll be... To the service late, so I believe he's going to want to say something at the burial. We'd be honored. Um, yeah. So. Okay. And if you'll just, as we make our way to the graveside, if you'll just introduce some pets, we'll we'll certainly have space for that. Okay. All right. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for gathering us together today to know your grace made known to us through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ as we gather to hear words of comfort and to be comforted by song and all those who surround us, may we continue to know your grace shown through your Son, Jesus Christ. As we remember the life and commend to God, Johannes, we give you thanks for all that we see and his continued joy in all those surrounded here. And we pray that you continue to bless us and nourish us in this hour and in all that is to come. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you join me up?
instructions and directions for joining the family at the grave side will be given near the end of the service. And you are all welcome to join us at the grave side. We commend Johannes' body and commit it to its final resting place. At this time, I invite you to stand if you are able for our procession. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Johannes. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is Isaiah 58, 8 through 12.
Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If for you remove the yoke from amongst you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The Word of God. It will come to an end. For we know only in 
part, I mean, we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. We are now honored to hear from members of the family who will share reflections of their life with you. This was a poem I wrote this morning. It started last night, and I should have renamed it by all who knew him, who always asked, How do you pronounce your name? And he would say, Your Highness. <laughs> so, this is a poem to your Highness. <laughs> Johannes Goldmarin, great relative and friend. Distinguished engineer, a cherished spouse to the end. Provider and protector, giver of unconditional love, flowing rich and godly wisdom, with deep faith in our Lord above. And when you walk into a room, erasing each and every gloom, your eyes shine bright, your smiles unite. From all despair, you are immune. A brilliant Fulbright scholar, a walking history book, fluent in four languages, Preserving your stunning youthful look. You never look for graces, erasing fears and doubts. You humbly and intensely programmed your object oriented grounds. The story about Johannes would be one richly told by all who knew his character, this man who had a heart of gold. Thank you now, dear Father, you taught us right from wrong, instilling us the values, those which help us to be strong. And though we cannot see you now, although we are apart, your spirit lives forever, patched in our mourning hearts. Today let's not think of him, or let's think of him still here. Let's not forget to bring him near. He would have wanted it this way, with love between us all to stay. Because of him we congregate, instead of tears we celebrate. This wondrous life of your eyes, forever robed and great with happiness and grace. This is my dad, you want to hold on? And I love you with all my heart. He was so many things to so many people. To me, he was a father, my friend, and my big support. As a child, I could not have had a better father. My favorite child knew me. Was that he used to get up early in the morning and uh, on Saturday and Sunday mornings he'd wake me up early and we would sit on his lap in his special chair and he would wrap a blanket over me, a gabi, a traditional blanket. And we would watch morning cartoons and listen to the news. I loved being in, in his arms. When I was young, my first job was a newspaper delivery boy on my, on my bicycle. Almost every day he would uh, get up early. He'd help my brother and I wrap papers, back when we used to have papers. He'd wrap them, put it in the bag for us, and then he would drive around following us, helping us deliver papers. I learned my work ethic then. He took me to Boy Scouts. He taught me math and science and the importance of an education and faith and love and fairness. He made me a man. He made me feel so special by his words and his actions. He loved me unconditionally, even when I occasionally disappointed him. 
I think he just made everyone feel that way. Sometimes he feels special, but you can see he makes everyone feel special. As an adult, my father became my friend. He genuinely loved to hear about my life and celebrated in every victory as though it was his own. I love to hear stories about how he grew up and became my dad. As I learned more about him, I learned I really didn't know him at all. He's so complicated. He would tell me stories of how much he, how much help he received in his life from people like Jack Smith and Gloria Powell and Carl and Kay Frum and Bill Ricketts and countless other people through the church and through his network of friends. All these people had a huge impact on his life and his family life. Mostly the reason why we're here today, why we're able to be here. All these people had a huge impact, but what I didn't know was how much he impacted their lives and how many more people that they helped through the church because of his success and his gratitude. He used to tell me that God has a plan for us and that every time he would be in trouble in his life, God's plan was to show him something better for our family. He would say that all the time. In the 80s, because of cutbacks, he lost his job. He was laid off from uh, his job as an engineer. He was under huge stress with two young boys and a wife depending on him with no income and no savings. He told me he went to church and the pastor prayed for him and they made an announcement to the congregation. He said the next week he got a call from Alameda County Library, uh, uh, Public Works Department, which is the uh, engineering department uh, for the state of California. And he had a job offer. And the person that called him was a friend of someone that went to the church. And he said he was highly recommended from a church member. That government job had a pension, and that pension helped him provide for his family, had a savings, and also it all in his retirement. That's what he meant by God has a plan. He never lost faith. He was such a man of science, but he was also a man of faith above all. That was an incredible man of a generation of men that were incredible. He was unbelievably intelligent, very loving, very funny, generous to a fault, and compassionate to all he met. May his example in faith and family influence us to help continue his legacy. This is my dad, Johannes Wolderheim, and I loved him with all my heart. I couldn't sum summarize my father's life, and that's why. What a great summary, Foster. Good job. Uh, you'll hear a lot of. I actually wrote this a couple of years back when my dad turned 90. We did a tribute to, to him. A lot of the family members here, as well as friends, you know, did a, a written tribute to him, some pictures, and it was a, a great gift, I think. I don't know. Uh, my sister may have thought of that, but it was a great, great idea. But from that, I wanted to, I wanted to read to the congregation. Obviously, um, you know, my father's seen this, but I, I did want to, and, and most of you that came by the house yesterday have read some of the stuff here in that, in that tribute book we have sitting out on the table, but I do want to share with this, with this group here. 
what he meant to what he meant to me, and um, and and you'll hear a couple of things in here, my brother. You know, accurately described my dad. Uh, so it's a thank you. It's a thank you note. Uh, a thank you list to the best dad son could ask for. And I want to thank you, I said to, to dad, for coming back with me when I refused to take an ACS entrance exam without you being in the room. So we were five years old. I mean, I was five years old. And uh, getting this prestigious school that cost a lot of money, about $5,000 5, uh, annually uh, in Ethiopia. And you had to take an exam to get in, but you had to take the exam on your own uh, without your present, uh, parents' presence there. And, and he had to go to work, so he drops me off in there, and I'm, uh, I'm uh, taking the, uh, the test, but he, you know, I was sitting with my dad next to me, and he, uh, he slips out the door, and I notice he's not there, so I start crying, disrupting other students from taking their tests. Teacher comes back and says, no, 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 you have to come in you know, and get your son. Come on. I mean, this is $5,000. If I take the test and pass, they will weigh that exam, the, the, uh, the fee. So we went back and forth, and finally, he had no choice hit. So I had to hear it all the way home. Like, great son. And he could have gone to this, now you're going to cost me $5,000. But he, uh, yeah, but he, he came back for me. He let me sit, like my brother said, watching TV, covered in that traditional uh, blanket called Gabi, and having a sip of his beer. Sorry, Pastor, Mom. But, but, but uh, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, and um, taking me to work at the University of Utah at a Southern College, or a building college. And I always remember him buying me an egg sandwich every single time I went over there. Uh, putting me in Boy Scouts, uh, like my brother said. I'll never forget, uh, and I told the story to my older brother, carrying it. Uh, we had a hiking trip, a camping trip, and part of it was Pea Ridge, Arkansas. I hiked 10 miles, and uh, I couldn't make it two feet. Take the backpack, I said, Dad, I can't do it. And he carried the entire backpack for me, the whole 10 miles. Uh, I made it to, I think, the second class, and that tells me my Boy Scout career didn't end. Didn't last that long. Uh, encouraging me to play soccer, uh, affirming I was always the best player. Yes, I was the best player today. Uh, providing pretty much everything we needed growing up. Never said no. Never, ever said no to, to anything. I can't remember ever saying no. And, and you know, we didn't, we didn't have a lot of money. Never said. Uh, and my father said, you know, just the same thing. Part of paper run. I started remember waking up Sunday morning. Was, things were tough, and I could barely carry it on my bike. And he'd follow us around in the car, and you know, every morning deliver paper for me with me. Uh, let's see. Teaching me how to drive a stick, manual stick, and very patient with me. Uh, encouraging, me, encouraging me to do well in high school, allowing me to participate in sports, teaching me how to play chess, although I would never be as good as him or my brother. Uh, that's, I went back to chess. Um, encouraging me to learn computers, uh, that didn't last long either. Um, yeah, I wish I had listened to him on that one. Uh, being in high school graduation, great pictures, helping me buy my first car. Uh, I didn't have the down payment. And it goes back to his generosity. He helped me buy my first car. Uh, welcoming my friends to, my, to, to the home. Helping me with my math homework. Actually finishing my math homework. I never did it. He, he would do it. He's, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Well, calculus, physics, lending me money. I said anytime I needed it. Sending me off to Marine Corps boot camp. Uh, being at my graduation, surprising me at Officer Canada School with my family, walking my daughter to, to elementary school every morning when I was deployed. I sent my daughter, who at the time was four, and uh, both my mother and father took, took, and took them in in California. And every morning he'd take her to some pictures there in my event, I can remember. Uh, 
looking after looking after Wind Tunnel Road to Rank here in Winston Salem in 2010. Take it, took in my dog called Leo the Timid Lion. Uh, uh, calling me often when I was in the rank, encouraging me to encouraging me to complete my MBA, accepting and uh, accepting and giving a warm welcome to Karen, my wife, and to our family. Being in front of the center at our wedding ceremony, being my, being in my promotion ceremony uh, in, in the military, uh, so glad I made that one. Uh, and then basically I said, one single page doesn't illustrate what you meant to be done, or what you've done over my, my at the time, for 20 years, but certainly uh, over, until the end. But most important, thank you, Dad, for being an amazing example to me and how to be a loving father and husband. I love you, Dad, until we see each other again. Uh, on Thursday, April 4, 2024, 5.32 p.m., my father's hourglass right outside. Today, we gather here to mourn passing in our school tomorrow. The patriarch of our family also celebrate his amazing and wonderful life. I'm going to start not with my reflections, um, but with a brief history of my father's accomplishments, because I am proud of what he did. And his whole family is proud of what he did. He was born in Mogadishu, Somalia, in 1931, during the Italian occupation of the entire Horn of Africa. And this explains why, even though he's from Eritrea, uh, he was born in Somalia, because, my father, because his father was described for the Italians, and he, he was moved to Somalia by them. Johannes was one of only four students to be sent to the most prestigious high school in Ethiopia, the Emperor Alex Selassie High School in the capital of Addis Ababa. He graduated from that high school in 1949, ranked fourth in his class, excelling in math and physics. I bet you a lot of people in his family don't know this next to him, but um, he was a gymnast specializing in four tone land and palm horse exercises and performed for the emperor as a gymnast. I didn't know this until I was an adult. <laughs> um, he was one of eight students from his high school, as my younger brother mentioned um, before, and, and who, who were selected, uh, to, uh, and one of 13 total, to be sent on a government scholarship to higher education in England. He learned Italian as a youth and spoke it fluently until he died. He received his diploma in civil engineering in 1955 from Loughborough University in England, despite dealing with the death of his beloved mother in his senior year. In September of 61, my father became a lecturer in civil engineering in the newly created Addis Ababa University, where he taught until 1964. And then he was approached by the administration of the engineering college. He had the college, but without a master's or PhD degree, this was not possible. So what did he do? Recognizing the criticality of higher education, Johannes applied for and received a Fulbright scholarship to attend Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where he got his PhD in 1970. So he got a master's degree in civil engineering in the, in the meantime, and he, and he was chosen to join the Chi Epsilon uh, Scholastic Society for Civil Engineers. Uh, he spent a little time at Tri State College and at Trinity University in, in Indiana. Um, where he founded the college's Chi Epsilon Scholastic Society chapter, which still exists today. He was the director of public works department in the Ministry of Urban Development and Housing in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. He, was this, he rose to be the associate dean of faculty at the university. He was also head of the civil engineering department, where he was a professor of civil engineering. Um, he was the first board member and this might be one of his proudest accomplishments. Um, he was the first board member of Hope Enterprises, established by Jack Smith, which was a nonprofit foundation that served the street children in Addis Ababa. And with Jack, he built that uh, foundation uh, to, to, a, to a very large uh, organization. Um, and this is why we encourage you to donate to Jack Smith's son's legacy on profit called Hope Unlimited, doing the exact same work in Brazil, uh, just north of Rio de Janeiro. 
He was a 19-year veteran of the County Alameda Public Works Agency, where he was a head engineer for bridge projects. He wrote a book called Connie's Iterative Methodist Structural Analysis. I, I didn't know that until I saw his resume recently. And in retirement, the last 20 years he worked on a, he was programming a suite of six civil engineering apps, and after 20 years of somewhat leisurely programming, uh, he finally finished the app last December um, at 93 years, almost 93 years old. The software is called Civil Pack, it's now available on the Apple App Store and Google Play. But the most most of all, he loved his family, and all of us were around him when he took his last breath. Now I'm going to mention a few of my reflections. Um, every story that my brothers told was true of all of us. All the, the holding us, wrapping us in a and watching cartoons. I mean, all of those things that my two brothers told. So, I'm not going to repeat all of those, um, but um, yesterday we observed the total eclipse in North America. The total solar eclipse for me, for my family, and for many of you, we are now experiencing another total solar eclipse. Because for me, and for some of you, my father was our son. As our son warns our world, he was my warmth in the cold world. As the sun dependably rises and sets, he was the dependable feature in my life. As the sun is used to mark directions for travelers, he was the sun behind my own internal compass. He gave me moral and spiritual direction. This man taught me how to drive, but he also taught me the love of music, classical music. He taught me how to laugh, he always made me laugh. He taught me how to be tough mentally because kick my butt and chest until one day I beat him and then he never played me again for 10 years. Um, to this day I think I wonder whether I might legitimately beat him or he just let me win. Um, you want to love people. He loved his family. All of them. All of you. He loved all of you. Do you know how we know this? Because he said it. He told you he loved you. And because he lived it. My father taught me how to be affectionate. Because he was affectionate with me. He was an active hugger and kisser. He always told me to grab both ears of my wife and kiss her on both cheeks. And that's how she knew that those kisses came from him. Especially as a male, this expression, you know, demonstrative expression of love and affection, is actually quite rare. So he stood out when he hugged his family and told them he loved them. We also know he loved many people because he gave them his time and his attention and his money. And as my brother said, he was a generous man, often to a fault. Winston Salem is one my angel once said, I have learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. My father always made people in his presence feel good, starting from his family, extending to his friends and co-workers, whether it was through laughter or through stories or through generosity, he left his imprint on you. When my dad was about my age in the 60s, we were talking about his own father and how he lived a long life, a life we thought was 91 years old, um, and seen his grandchildren and remarried in his 70s and had children before and after my father had me. Yes, I have one that's younger than me. My uncle Moses is sitting there with us and he's younger than me. Um, realizing I had not even married, Leave alone had grandchildren for him to love on. I made my father make me a promise to live at least until the age of his father when he left the earth, and he did. And he even beat him by a year. And I'd like to believe that's part of what kept him going all these years. That promise to me, 
that and my sister really had taken care of his health for all these years. As he got older, my father faced numerous physical issues, back pain, swelling in his feet, cataracts, glaucoma, amongst other things. But one of the worst really was gout, uh, this autoimmune disease, where certain foods caused an increase in your gastric level. And one time, several years ago, when he was 89, he had a painful attack of gout, which lay him on his back, and as his family gathered around in his bed, I reminded him he had three more years to keep his promise. But then he shot back, no, two years. And I replied, okay, but what's the hurry? And his response was, it's not for nothing they say rest in peace when someone passes away. Part of Western North Carolina was the home of the Cherokee tribe. And one, one of my you know, favorite sayings was actually a Cherokee proverb that goes like this. When you were born, you cried, and the world rejoiced. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you rejoice. We know that the honest have gone to be with our Father in heaven, to be with his beloved mother and all those who came before him. But we also do cry now because this is exactly how he lived his life with joy and happiness and generosity. And we cry because we will miss him. Johannes was a man of incredible faith and belief in God, who always, and God who always had a plan for him. This faith led him to believe that when he faced adversity, it was always because God had no plan for him, an often better opportunity that God had prepared him for. This positivity was infectious to me and all of us. A great man has left this world after making it a sweeter and gentle space for all of us. They don't make them in your world, Dad. You were a unicorn. We will always love you and miss you, Dad. We bid you for well in your own words. I will see you. Rest in peace, Dad. Now I'd like to invite anyone else who has anything to say. So one thing he said when we were all huddled together in his, his literally the last day or the day before, uh, uh, we heard him say, uh, because that means he had, uh, he was telling my mother that he had, oh no, I'm sorry, my mother said that to him, meaning we were taking care of him and we had blessed children that were taking care of him. He turned around and told her, he said, I don't think we still have an issue. Meaning, I know I'm messing up the words, but it means I had a, I had a blessed wife, so she wasn't really able to come up and speak today, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that was conveyed at 64 years of marriage. That's, that's what this is about. And just making sure that mom knew. How difficult it is to share the life of Dr. Johannes, of many theories of true love to every human being that he met. I met Dr. Johannes when I was nine years old. He was in my family's house to take the hands of my sister for marriage. That important day for him, I have insisted that he played chess with, checkers with me. And he was graceful enough to say, okay. While he was in a busy and important day for him, he accommodated me just to play chess. But while he was talking to me, while he was playing with me, he was talking to my family and how he would be happy to join to marry his, his wife, which is my sister. And in the process, I'm busy working trying to play.
Thou art he who from everlasting hath been the king of the entire creation and its upon you for. And thou wilt to everlasting remain the Lord of all created things in our kingdom. Glorify, glorify art thou, O oh my God, that thou ceasest to be merciful unto thy servants, who then will show mercy unto them. And if thou refusest to succor thy loved ones, who is there that can succor them? Glorify and measurably glorify art thou. Thou art adored in thy truth, and thee do we all verily worship. Thou art manifest in thy justice, and to thee do we all verily bear witness. Thou art in truth beloved in thy grace. No God is there but thee, out in peril, self subsisting The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth 
and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. It is a great relief to be able to say I feel like a lot of what you will hear from me will be repeated from what Johannes' children have already told you. There is always a nervousness that I will come out and say lots of nice things and that there's some stories over here that maybe contradict. But the, the man that I knew is that sounds like the same man who raised his children and was a loving father and family member. And so I feel very confident in saying to know Johannes Waldemarium was to be welcomed by him. The first time I visited, as I'm sure many of you can relate to, it involved a very short time sitting on the comfortable chairs in the front room, ex exchanging some pleasantries, but the real crux of the visit happened when I was invited back to the table where we had tea and coffee and sweets and nuts, and I imagine if I had been able to stay longer a full meal and more. I encountered in that room one of the most hospitable attitudes I have met since I moved here to Winston-Salem. The more I've heard about Johannes and his relationship to others, the more I'm confident in saying that if Johannes had a room for you, you were certainly welcome to it. I am also confident in saying this, that his heart for welcoming others was born in no small part out of the strength of his faith in God. And what really sealed that for me in confidence, normally when I'm visiting with someone and anyone from the medical field comes in, I get ushered out very quickly. However, for the first time in my memory, when I showed up to visit with Johannes, the nurse who was taking care of him was asked to leave. <laughs> in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. A beautiful promise we hear today from John's Gospel. The promise is the assurance that the God who Johannes believed in and who strengthened and upheld him every day of his life, that God takes on the same welcoming attitude and has joyfully welcomed his son Johannes into God's eternal dwelling place. We're gathered here to celebrate that promise. The promise is the assurance that Johannes is home with God receiving the promise of eternal life and peace. We're also gathered here to acknowledge that because Johannes has received the fulfillment of that promise, it means he is no longer here with us, and his absence leaves a hole in our hearts because of the love we knew that this man held for each and every one of you who's gathered here. As I was told... He was the man with the biggest heart. And so while we rejoice that Johannes is at peace in God's presence, there is no shame in mourning the loss of so great and kind and wise a man in this world that so desperately needs more like him. When someone as beloved and full of life as Johannes dies and goes to life eternal with God, it is no surprise if we relate to Thomas who struggled to understand, who felt left behind, who did not want to be left alone. We can relate when we may not know what comes next or where we should be going without our husband, our father, our grandfather, our teacher, our friend, to help guide us and shine the way forward. Along with Thomas, we know that peace in heaven does not always equal peace on earth. However, God knows this as well. Jesus promised Thomas that though he would not see Jesus again in the flesh, he would not be alone. And Jesus promises that though our loved ones may leave us for a time, you are never left alone. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Comforter, 
will remain and be with us long after he and all those we love have gone on before us. And by trusting and praying in God as Johannes was so fond of doing, we can find the way to life with Christ. We can find the truth, the strength to believe in the same faith that meant so much to Johannes. And we find the life that we will one day be reunited again in paradise and in peace with our dear friend, grandfather, father, husband, teacher, and we will find true peace. May the God who brings us peace, may the God who gives you life, and the God who shows us the way to these things by believing in him grant you the same surety in faith that he granted to Johannes. And may you rest in that surety that one day you will be welcomed into the dwelling place of God by Johannes with his warm embrace. Thanks be to God for that. Amen.
his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic.
On behalf of the family, I wish to thank you for your presence here today as we commend to God the life of Johannes. In just a few moments, our worship service will conclude and we will make our way to the graveside for burial. And you are invited to share in that. There will be a procession led by a car and the hearse and the family car, which is lined up along 5th Street. However, we realize that not everyone is parked there. So there will be a few moments after we leave. We'll need to take our robes off and, and get prepared. But if you are planning on attending the graveside and you're along 5th Street, please go ahead and line up. However, we will also be taking that procession and making our way up the hill and back down Pilot View right behind the church. So if you're parked back there, you're welcome to wait there for us. And we'll take the procession from Pilot View down Peters Creek to Park Line. If we do separate, this cemetery is located down Peters Creek just past 40 on your right across from Parkland High School. And now, let us share in the commendation. Let us commend Johannes Valdemerium to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Johannes. Acknowledged, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now hear God's blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We rise for our final hymn.
Family, if you need a moment, it's okay to go back inside. Go ahead and get your card and we'll get you done. Yeah. Follow this line, get behind all these cars. You can have it.
God's peace be with you. We will now share in a brief service to offer a committal to his resting place. At the conclusion of this service, you are invited to spend a moment to share final respects or a quiet moment among family. And then we will return back to the church where the ladies of the church have prepared a luncheon. And I know some of your traditional dishes have been prepared for many of you to share in our time together. So we gather with grace and peace from our Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and powerful, by the death and burial of Jesus, your anointed, you have destroyed the power of death and made holy the resting places of all your people. Keep our brother, Johannes Waldemarium, whose body we now lay to rest in the company of all your saints. And at the last, O God, raise him up to share with all the faithful the endless joy and peace one through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. And a reading from Revelation. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And the sure and so certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Johannes, and we commit his body to its resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. 
The Lord's face shine on him with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon him with favor and give him peace. Amen. Rest eternal, grant him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. We pray, O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. ever. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good that you may do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us go in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Before, before they are on, I just wanted to say one, one last thing about my father. My father man who believed in two things very, very deeply. He died the most dignified death possible with his, all of his children around him in his own house, in his own bed, with his own family. And he gathered us to say to love one another, to take care of one another. He believed in love. of love. And the other thing that he believed in was gratitude. He believed in the power of gratitude. And he believed in practicing gratitude and being thankful. He often was thankful for everyone that he met. He was so thankful to meet Abuya Abdul Rahman. He used to take me there all the time. He was so thankful that he had his sisters and his brothers, extended family. He was so thankful for all of his his own children, but also his children's children and his the mothers of his grandchildren. He was thankful for everyone. Believe in these things. As we say goodbye. Please take all the time you need to gather again to celebrate it.
We are able to watch the lowering, but we just need to be out of the way so the center here. So if you please come down right here. Pastor. Pastor. Am I okay right here? Mm -hmm. Am I okay right here?
Friends, this concludes what the workers are able to do in our presence. You are welcome now to come and share a flower and place it inside, and then we'll make our way back to the church. Thank <laughs> you.